Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome back to Fruitopia in Melbourne, Australia. Yep, Melbourne. Just confirming our location again. So today's a, a very comfortable kind of day. Not hot, not cold. Well, cold for Queenslanders and um, perfect for Tasmanians. Depends who you ask. So let's go and check the temperature quickly before I share what we're up to today. Okay. Oh. Ooh, looks like I've been busy, doesn't it? Hmm? Yeah. Um Oh looks like seventeen. Yeah, seventeen at uh two in the afternoon. So guys, this is what I've been up to on this uh lazy day. Lazy because um it's quiet, right? It's a weekend. There's no one around. People are out doing their family thing, thing. And I've been in the garden doing my thing, right? So, um, where are we going to start? We're going to start with this guy here. I've been planting. And I've been doing <clears throat> something different. Well, sort of different. I already started it in the front yard, which you guys saw already. Density planting. And the reason we're doing it, let's see, I can think of quite a few reasons. Uh, but we'll get to the reasons soon. Let's, let's cover the trees first. The first tree I planted this morning was this canistel from Dailies, which I had in the greenhouse all winter, and it came through like a champ. By the way, by the way, my greenhouse is not heated. Someone asked me, um, you keep talking about your greenhouse, greenhouse, greenhouse. Is it heated? No, it's not heated. So um, it gives frost, frost protection, but uh, only a degree, one degree or maximum two degrees Celsius um, um, extra comfort during winter time. So that one or two degrees can make a difference, can. Well, it made a difference for this, for this egg fruit tree, right? So that's tree number one, and it's starting to wake up. It's the middle of October, guys. That means it's the middle of spring in Australia. And now's a good time to start planting your tropicals anytime in October. Uh, preferably from the middle onwards, not the beginning of October. You could do it in the beginning of October because every October varies. They're not identical. Okay. So the next tree I, I uh, planted today was this Brolinia, right? The uh, Brazilian custard apple. It's got many names. And this also survived in the um, unheated greenhouse. And it's also waking up. Let's have a look. There you go waking up and hang on let's get closer there waking up so it's only a tiny fella oh and I can see another little hang on yep new growth so it's pushing and when I saw that in the last week this happened in the last week uh, it's time to get in the ground because guys, in the pots, these don't do much here in my zone 9B. Next tree I planted was um, that one there, that stick. Doesn't have any leaves on it. The one with the pink tag. And that fella is Mame Sapoti, another one. A different variety to the one I planted in the front yard. I don't recall now the name, but I got that one from um, 
I believe um, Ross Creek if I'm not wrong but I, I don't remember it might have been Daly's but I think it's Ross Creek you can tell from the from the tag that's a, a Ross Creek special uh, and that also was in the greenhouse the unheated greenhouse all all um, winter and it only lost its leaves at the end of winter so I'm, I'm waiting I'm waiting to see some uh, new life come I was gonna wait till that happened before I put it in the ground it's usually the best time to plant when you see some kind of life right but I just wanted to do everything today and over there the back um, that fellow there that's a Davidson plum um, which I've had for three years in a pot it's had a hard life it started off in a pot then I put it in the ground it died in the ground right there where that imbi is I had it there and it died so I pulled it out of the ground and put it into a pot and today I took it out of the pot and put it back in the ground over there right behind the bananas here by the way look what's protecting all these um, trees you got the ice cream bean got bananas and this new mulberry which is only a year old or a year in the ground I should say it's already uh, three meters tall so this is I'm, I'm hoping this will bush out so we got um, um, canopy and whilst that Davidson plum was busy dying and coming back to life it's a pretty freaky tree that one it decided to split itself in three <laughs> so I've got three plants now over there instead of um, separating them dividing them I just left all three in the same hole I might divide them at, at, at a future point I just didn't want to disturb I didn't want to disturb them so um, yeah there it is there Davidson plum David sends plum yeah I didn't want to disturb them I might divide them later okay and the next next tree I planted did I do any other ones I'm oh, sure I did um, oh that's all for now and now I'm digging a hole for the the fourth tree one hang on one two three four yeah the fourth tree is gonna be this one here um, another soursop that's the third soursop I have it's a guanabana or graviola <coughs> as the Brazilians call it right this is the golden variety from dailies and it's got one hang on or is it one leaf left one from last year and this year well in the last month or so it shot out that eaten that leaf has been eaten and that little baby one but best of all guys it's got all these um, new um, where are we yeah these new shoots at the top and something going on down here at the bottom right there's 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 movement there's activity as fine as it is um, it's enough for me to say yep I see you're ready so we're gonna be putting that one in the ground right here directly behind the Tahiti black black sapoti um, and um, between the um, mulberry here and the black sapoti right in between and we've got a yellow jabuticaba here and a yellow jabuticaba there they've been in the ground for a year now and they've only grown hmm, they've only grown five inches in 12 months extremely slow jabuticaba slow guys so a reminder look at the persimmon in comparison this persimmon was planted two years ago and it's doubled in height in those two years actually it's tripled in height so a big difference with the jaboticaba 
See the difference? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna plant next in here. And then I'll come back to you guys. Hi. Um, we have a lemon tree too. A 30 a 30 year old lemon tree that's also gonna do some kind of protecting for this um, new new um, tropical area well it's not new but sort of new right we're gonna fill it in as much as we can to take advantage of the microclimate and the micro horizon which I spotted hang on which I spotted when I was digging this hole before uh, hang on it's all gone now why wow, it disappeared Oh, you can still see it there, where I planted the relinia. See those little white specks? Huh? See that? Well, that hole where I put the relinia, that hole there, was full of micro horizon. Full of it. We're all the way down in the hole. Wow, amazing, huh? So that told me that this whole area underneath the ice cream bean tree is covered, right? covered in beneficial bacteria so that's what we're going to be taking advantage of right that's what it's all about guys so anyone who's ready to bring out their claws and start um, giving me <laughs> their opinion about this being too dense um, well, good luck trying to convince me otherwise. Okay. We're done. With a golden sour sop. Alright, let's move on. I've got a lot of mulch here too. Which I'm going to throw onto these guys in a few days. It's going to rain like hell again tonight. That's, that's another reason I'm doing it today, instead of waiting. Because once it, the drought comes, it's too late. Once the drought comes, we're back to um, tap water. Um, yes, I'm going to be putting all this mulch, 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 mulch. There's mulch everywhere, right? Mulch, mulch, mulch. Onto these new plantings. Um, in about, I don't know, two or three days. When the water drained within 20 seconds on every single planting so we're not going to have root rot the only thing that's going to kill these guys will be the cold the freezing cold in winter and this is from another angle coming from uh, from here right we've got the Avocado, we got the cherry moya, the ice cream bean, the mastera, the bougainvillea, the um, pepino, that lemon tree, these bananas, the little black sapote there, right? So all these guys are like in the midst of everything I just showed you. The only opening is between the lemon tree and this gyro persimmon which hasn't fully filled out yet. Uh, so in here is where the uh, the winds can still come through in here and the morning sun which is what we want. That's the morning sun by the way right right above that banana that plantain that's the morning sun 6 a.m. which is perfect for these young tender sooks. Okay, that's those four done. It's only the start, guys. It's only the beginning. I've got a lot more to do. That took me exactly one hour, which was so easy, so easy. Instead of um, breaking into clay with a pick, right? No picking here. It was just a soft, just a soft shovel into that uh, organic matter and we were in it took like two minutes okay so who's next oh man what I want to do is put these North American pawpaws 
in the ground. I should have done it, coulda, woulda, shoulda, back in um, August, early September, but I didn't. And there's the other one. I bought two from Dailies last year. So they got to go in the ground. They don't have to. I can wait another year, but two years in the pot, mm, you want their roots, their roots to go in, right? So that's one project, these two. Um, North American pawpaws, not papayas, because in Australia we call papaya pawpaw. They're not papayas. The other one I want to plant is this guy who's waking up, right? He's waking up. And, yep, he's ready. Wow. He's definitely ready. And this one is uh, mislabeled. Daly's Bullock's Heart, I believe. Not Red Llama according to the feedback I got from viewers. Even Daly sent me an email and said they made a mistake. Doesn't matter what it is, right? I'm not a purist. I'm not a purist, guys. Um, so this is, I want this in the ground today, this um, Anona. Um, it would be nice to get the, the, the lychee in the ground, but I don't know where. The two Abiyu and the two... Um, Kaimitos, uh, they're not ready for ground. They're not ready to go in the ground. They're tiny. Um, so, yeah, I got an Anona, I got a lychee, I got two North American pawpaws, I've got this um, guava, which is also waking up, supposedly the sweetest guava in the whole world. Um, and I've got a Thai guava over there, which has died back twice over the last two winters. Look at the size of the pot, but it's alive, it's coming back. And then I've got a cherry moya seedling. That was originally a maruchador um, custard apple and the, um, what do you call it? The, um, the graft died, see it? It was there on the left side. So I let the rootstock take over. Oh, there it is there. See, Maruchidor. Nice place, by the way. We were there for the first time this past winter. And that's, that's, that's waking up. So I want to put a seedling in the ground too. No, I'm not going to graft onto it like many of you guys like doing. I'm not into grafting, guys. I've got enough room here to play with single trees, right? I've got plenty of room. Um, so that's another one. And the other tree that I wanna get in the ground would be the two papayas from Daly's. I wanna get those in. This new avocado, which I got from Facebook Marketplace. He's ready to go in too, look at that. Wow. Um, and that's grafted. He's ready. He's more than ready. What else have we got? We've got those four achachas. <clears throat> a friend from Sydney said that they like larger pots. So for me, that means just put them in the ground. Forget about potting. They're going to go in the ground too somewhere. And then I've got uh, one, two, three young baby canisters that died and came back over there. Um... I mean, no hurry to plant those. Oh, and I've got that wax jambu that died back in winter in the greenhouse, that big pot there. I can't get wax jambu to work, guys. Wax jambu and a cha-cha are my two um, hard trees. Oh, we have a we have a mulberry that's ready. Someone asked me, why have I got so many mul mulberries? Guys, why not? Mmm. That's the um, the dwarf, which is over three meters tall. Not a dwarf at all. So, um, yeah. And what was the other one? Oh, the Pitanga Duba. I want to get this in the ground too. It's been in the pot for two years, and all it does, all it has done for two years is send out these flower buds and then drop them. No fruit. What a tease. So maybe he just needs a spank. 
uh, and I was gonna put him under under these uh, four trees right here in the open sorry in the um, canopy <clears throat> the canopy of the Fuyu the canopy of the Subel the canopy of the green sapoti and the canopy of this mulberry right under so it gets all day shade in summer not winter in winter the Fuyu drops its leaves as does the mulberry so in winter it will be half exposed exposed in the morning for morning sun which is ideal um, what else have we got uh, cedar bay cherry I don't know about that one wanted to get that in the ground very slow growing almost died in winter because I wasn't here to water it in the greenhouse should have left it out instead of in the greenhouse I've got a hay hue whatever it's called longan I want to plant that as well it's starting to come back look at all those dailies labels a every label you see every yellow label you see is fifty dollars <laughs> count the 50s can you count the 50s it's like 50 dollar notes hanging on every on every um um stake okay so that's it that's what we have here and i've got a lot of white sapoti and avocado seedlings which i'm not going to deal with guys okay oh and i've got um a vuz ruby guava which i put into a large pot the one there with the orange label wow i can't believe how it took off in one week in one week let me show you vuz new guava instead of doing separate videos i like putting everything in one video Look at this. In the last week, in five days, we got that. <laughs> wow. And and down here. And this little one coming. Yeah, in five days. In five days, it grew three inches. That's the ruby guava. That was a gift from Vu for spending all that money. Um, but that can stay in the pot for a whole year till it gets um, its roots, right? So, the jamun is flying, it's taken off, like a, like a jet airliner, which is what we wanted to see last year, but for some reason, last year it was a no-show. This is going to be the year, guys, for the jambulan. Yeah, I'm hoping it'll grow another two meters by, by March. All right, so what else? That's it. Let me start digging some holes and I'll come back to you. Okay. Fast forwarding now. Three hours from the uh, initial trees planted. We got, just quickly because it's starting to rain. I got two guavas planted and two um, North American pawpaws. This is that sweet guava I was talking about. A few of you have asked me what, what it is. Um, it's the... Oh, that's the wrong way. Okay, it's called the White Alabad Guava. A-D-V. I don't know anything about it, so you'll have to do some research to find out about it. Looks like it's from Pakistan. Um, and it's just waking up now. Well, it's been waking up for a whole month. Uh, we haven't had any heat. Guavas are like mangoes. They need, they need heat. Not, um, not 15 Celsius, guys. Um, the uh, North American purple. I got one here under the uh, um, fig, which is gonna take off in November, December, giving shade. He's a sook. He needs shade. The first couple of years, it's going to be shaded. And there's my Thai guava. Um, the one that died back the last two winters unprotected in winter. I never protected it. So looks like it's a true tropical full-on guava, that one. Um, but it's coming back, as you can see. Right? The, the little... Um, growth there so 
yeah it keeps coming back every spring uh, in a pot I've had it in a pot for two years so now we're gonna try in the ground and it's in the center between the the star fruit the two longans the loquat the kalamondan right it's in good company I'm hoping that it's gonna sort of shoot up above them but that's gonna take a few years okay next um, um, I planted uh, pitangatuba yeah um, in that microclimate I was talking about right overhead canopy um, for you white uh, white sapote green sapote um, mulberry right there it is there the pitanga tuba which I've had for two years in a pot and it keeps um, flowering and that's all this is the other North American pawpaw that's gonna get burnt a little bit in the afternoon because um, it's facing the the afternoon sun early afternoon lunchtime the high noon sun which is up there right it's gonna get two hours of midday sun sorry little fella sorry but we're gonna have to try and help him out uh, over January February so what else did I plant so one two three four okay and the other trees can you believe these took two hours this took two hours to do what I just showed you in in uh, two minutes um, the other the other two trees I planted are in the front so let's go to the front okay and the other oops someone's getting a a tree cut up the other two trees are here guys oh there's that nasty bird trying to get the mulberries there it is there well there they are there those two so that's the hue the hue longan it's the last one I planted like 10 minutes ago or less so it's getting protection from the apricot from the white sapote and from the black sapote right and all the other things all around so this is gonna be getting late afternoon Sun which is up there between 3 and 6 p.m. the end of the, the, the late afternoon summer Sun which is uh, where the mangoes are back there on the fence so I don't know how well he's gonna do with that late afternoon scorching Sun we'll find out he's easy to protect this small and here I put the um, the lychee and this guy gets almost full protection because of the Hicks fancy I can't believe they fired up that um, grinder it's a grinder a tree grinder when I'm filming <laughs> for the last three hours there was no sound at all out here it was only the birds anyway um, yeah he's getting protection from the white sapote two white sapotes right the mulberry potentially the future sapodia if it survives I know they're really close but guys it's called density planting right when you're dealing with tropicals this is the only way you're gonna get them to work in uh, zone 9a 9b in ground so this guy here this little fella is gonna be getting morning Sun let's have a look ah yep if uh, I just hope this uh, white sapote the um, Vista grows bigger right to give it uh, full protection in the morning right now it's gonna be getting that morning Sun and at noon 12 noon or 11 in the morning chop no more Sun for this guy no more Sun at all he might get like an hour of dappled light in the late afternoon through here right very dappled I'll show you yeah, it's getting very tight back here squeeze we're squeezing in 
right? That's the late afternoon sun. So he's not going to get much sun at all because it's too short. But he'll be getting that uh, morning sun. Check out the rocks. Hang on. These are the rocks under the lychee. The longan. The longan didn't even have one little, not even one little stone this small. <laughs> These are all under the lychee. That guy there. He was loaded with rocks underneath. But uh, the lychee had nothing. Just loam, soil, not even clay. Easy. That took me 10-15 minutes to, to plant. This one took almost an hour. And it was full on clay, as you can see. Right? But guys, look. Look, at, once again, the clay, soil, mostly clay, has drained much faster than the loam. That's loam over there. And it's still draining after half an hour. 30 minutes and it hasn't drained. This drained in three minutes. So the purists out there, pay attention. Because it's uh, you who's going to be learning from me. Right? Because I've got the, the, the proof in the pudding right in front of you. That's it. That was uh, four hours, four and a half hours of uh, digging, planting, and I'm done. Wow, it's going to pour now. It's going to rain for between eight and 12 hours. <laughs> it actually um, sprinkled. It sprinkled whilst I was finishing off. Right? This is a typical dreary, ugly Melbourne skyline this is why we get away in winter this is all you see in melbourne between may and september this is all you see five months of of that and people say oh i don't like the heat i don't like sunshine yeah pretty depre looks pretty depressing to me but thankfully it's um the middle of spring and tomorrow the next three days we're gonna have uh, pure sunshine all right guys that's it i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give me a like uh, a big thumbs up and uh, we'll catch you from the next video wow how, how far are we going All, oh wow, over half an hour <laughs> time flies when you're having fun how's this guy doing this is the carabao grafted manila mango day four looks like he might be getting some fruitlets yeah, we're not going to let those stay on though. No way. Not not after <laughs> not after 5 days in the ground transplanted. Yeah, it's got it's got like 100 fruitlets on it. I'm going to pull them all off. Vu said leave one on to, to taste the fruit. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. All right, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And we'll see you Again soon. Wow, a lot of videos coming up with all the all the um, trees I planted. The progress, right? The progress that's coming up over the next six, seven months. All right, guys. Over and out. I'm going to take a shower and have dinner. <laughs>